iPhones always have worse technical specs than Androids at the same price point. And the same applies to Macs versus PCs. And yet, Apple devices routinely outperform the competition on benchmark tests and by all accounts have a superior user experience. Why is that? By digging into the answer, we'll come to understand why Apple is creating custom silicon, such as the M-series chips found in MacBooks. And we'll uncover what the future of vertical integration at Apple looks like. To start though, let's think about an app like Google Chrome running on the average Windows PC. Each level of the tech stack was probably made by a different company. The browser by Google, the operating system by Microsoft, the silicon by Intel, the motherboard perhaps by Dell, and the various other components by a wide range of companies nobody's ever heard of. Each action, such as an app icon being clicked or a video being decoded, requires each layer to talk to the others through APIs. But because this device is so modular, each set of APIs was made by a completely different company. And these companies probably never talk to each other, so there's a lot of friction between each layer. This leads to more errors, more rough edges, and an overall slower experience. The whole is less than the sum of its parts. But for Apple products, every part of the stack was made by the same company. For a MacBook, that includes the browser, Safari, the Mac operating system, and the MacBook hardware itself. The creators of each layer in the stack work closely with the builders of other layers to make sure they work together seamlessly, optimizing all the IO protocols all the way down to the hardware layer. This makes communication within the device extremely smooth, efficient, and fast, and the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. You'll notice that there was one part of the stack we skipped over, and that was the processor, also known as the system on a chip, or the SOC. For over a decade, MacBook's processors were made by Intel. And because Intel didn't rigorously optimize its chips to work with MacBooks, there was still a little bit of friction. And so Apple introduced the M series chips to complete the vertical integration and sand away the last remaining bit of friction inside the stack. With this, Apple no longer needs to adapt to the constraints of third-party silicon, firmware, or drivers. It can just write its own versions of those in a way that works seamlessly with the rest of the tech stack. Instead of having to work with general purpose off-the-shelf chips, Apple can optimize its M-series chips to work really well for Apple-specific use cases, such as running iPhone apps on Macs. The chips can even optimize for all the various low-level calls that Mac OS makes, without having to work around design decisions made for Windows and the other operating systems. Apple's many silicon optimizations have yielded mass performance improvements. When the M1 Max first came out, one viral TikTok video showed someone opening 54 Mac apps in just 20 seconds on their new M1 MacBook. It's not just performance either. Apple can add all kinds of custom functionality to devices running custom silicon, features that weren't practical when using third-party processors. A good example is in video calling on the MacBook. As soon as MacBooks started using M-series chips, Apple could add custom image signal processors for the built-in camera, letting them enhance image quality on FaceTime, add highlights in low-light areas, use noise reduction to make images sharper, adjust exposure levels to make your face look smoother, and more. The benefits extend to the financial and supply chain sides too. The processor is often the most expensive part of a modern computing device, and so designing your own can greatly reduce costs. Plus, given that the semiconductor industry regularly experiences severe shortages, not having to rely on Intel, a company infamous for experiencing chip shortages and manufacturing delays, can make Apple's supply chain more resilient. In short, Apple's custom silicon push represents the culmination of its long-running vertical integration strategy. But this isn't the end of the story. There's a lot more that Apple plans to do in this arena. First, it's important to realize that Apple has only scratched the surface of custom chips. At the time of filming, the discrete GPUs, or DGPUs, used in Apple's highest-end desktops are still made by third parties like AMD. If Apple could create its own specialty graphics cards, just imagine the incredible performance gains they'd see for use cases like video editing or gaming, the latter being one of Windows' last strongholds against the Mac. Plus, innovations like the Neural Engine, which helps M-series chips with machine learning and artificial intelligence tasks, would also be highly useful on these DGPUs. What's more, Apple devices, including wearables, all use a variety of additional specialty chips, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. These are pretty old protocols, and the chips for them are general purpose, often optimized for Windows or Android, which still drives the majority of their volume. Apple could easily make its own versions of these connectivity protocols and custom silicon to go with it, 
to make things like AirPod connectivity, AirTag finding, or MacBook internet speeds even better. Finally, let's zoom out and look at the broader strategic picture. Much of Apple's success comes from the fact that the devices in its portfolio work so well together. If you own a MacBook and AirPods, for instance, you're very likely to buy an iPhone too, since the integrations between those devices are so powerful and seamless. If all of Apple's devices use custom Apple Silicon, they'd be able to run each other's apps. Consider how Mac users could start running iPhone apps as soon as M-series MacBooks launched. These synergies make Apple devices work even better together, further increasing the number of Apple devices that Apple users will buy. Another benefit is that all of Apple's previously separate app ecosystems, like Mac and iOS and Watch, start blending together. This means that any new Apple product will inherit all the apps created for this mega ecosystem in the past, overcoming the common problem where new products don't have any apps written for them. For example, new Apple wearables like AR and VR glasses will instantly be able to start using AR and VR apps, originally designed for iPhones making these glasses compelling purchases from day one. It's an exciting time for Apple Silicon and Apple hardware more generally. Apple has already reaped significant rewards from vertical integrations, supply chain improvements, performance optimizations, and merged ecosystems. And it looks like the future holds even more exciting possibilities. Things you'll definitely wanna talk about during your Apple PM interviews.